President Trump today venting frustration at some of the nation's governors. In a conference call, the president was at the White House, the president calling governors, quote, weak, saying they need a more robust police response to the protests going on now across the country. Seen as Caitlin Collins is at the White House for us. Uh, Caitlin, he says the governor should dominate. He calls them weak. What more do we know about this call? Yeah, and he said that Minnesota turned into the laughing stock of the world for how officers there handled those several nights of protest and riots that we saw breaking out. John, this is a really remarkable call, and CNN has obtained the audio. It's a call the president just had with governors, with law enforcement officials, with national security officials. And he was on this call, and he chose to start it by lashing out at these governors, telling them that most of them have been weak and that they start to need, they need to start cracking down on the protesters who are turning violent in the streets of their cities. He says that it's making the United States the laughing stock of the world. Listen to this really remarkable audio that CNN has obtained. What happened in the state of Minnesota, they were a laughing stock all over the world. They took over the police department. The police were running down the street, sirens blazing, the rest of them running. It was on camera. And then they wiped out, you probably have to build a new one, but I've never seen anything like it, and, and the whole world was laughing. Two days, three days later, I spoke to the governor, and the governor is, I think, on the call, and he's the next one guy. And all of a sudden, and I said, you got to use the National Guard to take numbers. They did it first, and they did. And I'll tell you that, I don't know what it was. It was governor, it was the third night, fourth night. Those guys walked through that stuff like it was butter. They walked right through, and you haven't had any problems since. I mean, they don't. They're not going to go there. Now they'll go to some other place. But once you called out and you dominated, you took the worst place, and you made it. They didn't even cover it last night because there was so little action. Because you dominated. You dominated. Now, what happens in New York, I have to tell you, I live in Manhattan. What's going on in Manhattan? I have no idea. New York's finest. They gotta be allowed maybe to do their jobs. I don't know what's happening in Manhattan, but it's terrible. And because it's New York, because it's Manhattan, it gets a lot of press. So they they really spend a lot of time on it. But New York is gotta have to toughen up. And we'll send you National Guard if you want. You have the largest police force in the country, forty thousand people, I understand. But what's going on in New York is terrible. It's terrible. Of all the places. What went on last night in Los Angeles with the stores and the storefronts is terrible. No domination. You have to dominate. Yeah, go ahead. That's something friends. And he says there at, the there at the end, John, that they have to dominate and start imprisoning some of these protesters who are turning violent. He said otherwise they are going to look like jerks. We should also note that the governor of Maine told the president that they were uncomfortable because he is scheduled to visit the state on Friday because of the security concerns. And the president said that because the governor of Maine was trying to convince him not to come, that now he was coming for sure. Um, the black and white from the president, law and order, dominate, dominate, you're weak if you don't. Uh, that's the president's message today, pretty clear. A much more nuanced uh, message from the former president of the United States, uh, Barack Obama, publishing uh, this post on Medium. Uh, it's very detailed. It's very nuanced. Uh, he gets in, you see here, let's not excuse violence or rationalize it or participate in it. If we want our criminal justice system and American society at large to operate in a higher ethical code, then we need to model that code ourselves, uh, the former president saying. If we want to bring about real change, then the choice is in between protest and politics, we have to do both. We have to mobilize to raise awareness, and we have to organize and cast our ballots to make sure that we elect candidates who will act on reform. Uh, I didn't listen to the entire call with the current president of the United States, so I want to be careful, uh, but a very different approach here uh, in tone. Uh, president Obama saying, please stop destroying things to the protesters and the demonstrators, but telling them to keep out there demanding change and reform. Yeah, this is the second statement that former President Obama has issued. He first issued one about three days ago. This one is much longer, and it's basically telling these protesters what to do moving forward, telling them to organize, telling them to mobilize and start voting as a way to respond to, of course, the death 
of George Floyd. And it's really notable hearing him speak out like this with this statement because this comes as there is a serious internal debate, John, happening inside the White House over what the president should do next. Some people say they have not heard from him enough. He did address this after that space launch on Saturday. I was with him down in Florida, but he has not had an address dedicated solely to the death of George Floyd and the protests that we have seen breaking out across the country and the rioting as well. Instead, those messages have mainly come from tweets in addition to what he said on Saturday. And so the question is right now internally, should he do some kind of Oval Office address? Should he do a Rose Garden address? Should he just do something to speak? And there are some people advocating for it. He's hesitant, though, because of his last Oval Office address on coronavirus was widely criticized because he made several inaccurate statements within just a matter of minutes. But then some people are encouraging the president that he does need to go out there and he does need to say something because he is the president. And of course, the nation is in crisis right now. Uh, the, the nation dealing with two crises right now. The President of the United States will choose his path. Caitlin Collins from the White House, thank you so much. We're also hearing from the presumptive Democratic nominee today as well, Joe Biden, the former Vice President, calling for unity. This at a meeting with community leaders in Wilmington, Delaware. CNN's Arlette Sines is there covering this for us. Arlette, what was the message from the former Vice President? Well, John, Joe Biden spent the morning at Bethel AME Church here in Wilmington, Delaware, meeting with those community leaders. And he really uh, spent a big portion of that morning just sitting there listening for about an hour, listening to these leaders' concerns when it comes to the issue of systemic racism, including the economic and also the health hardships that so many African Americans face in this country. And after he sat there for an hour listening, Joe Biden stood up in the middle of the church, pulled down his mask, and talked about some of the changes that he thinks need to be made. He says there needs to be changes to the way that police are trained as well as to the culture. He also talked a lot about uh, the economic uh, impact that so many African Americans have faced, particularly during the coronavirus pandemic as well. And he says that if he were president it, as part of the economic recovery, he would focus on fixing some of those institutional problems that exist. Now, Biden also talked about the larger need for unity. And that's a message that he's been stressing from the start of his campaign. Take a listen to what he had to say. Everybody is frightened and everybody's angry. And the first thing we have to do is bring people together. It sounds corny. We've got to bring them together. You may recall from the time I announced, I said I wanted to unite the country. Everybody's saying he's just naive. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't unite the country, and everything is done by executive order, that's called abuse of power. Now, Biden also said that he will be releasing some economic proposals relating to housing and economic opportunities in the coming week, as well as delivering some speeches over the course of the next few weeks. Now, in that meeting, Biden was also pressed on whether he will select a black woman as his running mate. Biden would not commit to that, only saying that he is considering uh, multiple black women as a possible vice presidential pick. And later today, in just a short while, Biden will actually be holding a virtual roundtable with the mayors of Atlanta, Los Angeles, Chicago, and St. Paul, Minnesota, all of those cities seeing those protests over the weekend.